Yeah, what's up? This is uh, G, just giving you a little bit of an introduction with a session that I'm working on with a student. Uh, but the most important thing I wanted to talk about was just how to get started. So if I got sent files or I'm working with my own files, how to sort of structure it in the way where we can get the best results even though we keep opening up different sessions, it follows a particular format. So this is a very crucial thing, which I want to talk about a little bit later. But the idea of today is just to let you feel and understand sort of what I go through. And a good way of doing it is to figure out your session format. So for now, what I've got here, I've got basic track. Kicks, snares, hats, toms, overheads, uh, a drum, parallel. It's just the way it was bounced out. That's all good. Bass DI, bass amp, another parallel bounced out the way it does. Uh, keys, overall mix, like the parallels, bounced out. Uh, normal keys, guitars, electric guitars, vocals, and that is another bounce out thing. So the idea of what we're doing is we want to try to organize a session. So what I tend to do at the start is I will organize a session in a way that makes sense to me for every other session I will organize. So usually, you know, you're doing the kicks for myself, kicks, snares, hats, toms. Um, I'm more of a drummer's perspective sort of dude. So the hi-hat is on the left. First tom, second tom, third tom, crash, ride. So I like to feel like I'm there drumming as I go and I pan it out the way that is. So, in that way of doing it, the way I'd pan it out is as me playing in the kit. But if you look at it the opposite way, then you need to do it a different sort of way of doing it. So your hi-hat is now on your right-hand side. First tom, second tom, third tom, and ride, and you crash. So it's the opposite way. But, you know, whatever tickles your fancy. So I'd like to go with the you know, normal version of it is go kick, snare, hats, toms. Then I pull my overhead left, overhead right, which is opposite for this track um, that I want to do because I'm a drummer's perspective dude. Bass DI, bass amp, keys, uh, guitars, and vocals. So this is just organizing the session. So I like to start with my rhythm first to the other main elements to the next section, which could be the vocals or it could be all like the other little bits and pieces and then the vocals after that. Just so when I go to any session that I want, because I color coded as well, you notice my awesome colors, by the way, um, Every sort of situation and every session that I work with follows this format. So subconsciously, I don't need to think, oh, where are my drums? I can see a color and be represented by that. I can see, oh, that's, yeah, that's my bass, yeah. It flows a certain way. The idea when you mix is you don't want to be too technical all the time because you're not being creative. Yeah, so working with your left hemisphere to your right hemisphere, but to the other way for you, it's like left and right. Yeah, but anyway, I'll keep it simple because I'll confuse myself. You want to keep creative all the time. So as much times as you can technical, you want to keep coming back to your creative aspect. So these are simple ways of you registering yourself going, look, I know the colors, I know where things are situated. I'm just going to go boom, boom, boom. I know where this is. I know where that is. Where's that vocal? I know it's down here. Oh, where's that little weird bass uh, here? I know it's there. 
Oh, where's that little hi-hat or Tom, Phil? Oh, I know it's him. So these are all crucial things to go with. So organizing your session is important. Another thing I want to show you is just organizing it in a way where rather than having a whole audio file, which takes up disk usage, um, performance or whatnot, what you want to do is, you know, where things are not playing, you really don't need anything to be there. So why not get rid of that shit, right? So what you can do is just solo, solo a track, make it bigger. What I tend to do is go here and, you know, different DAWs have different things, but you can make the waveform bigger. And, you know, how about me just cutting, cutting that shit. Don't need that. Don't need this. Let's make it a little bit more easy to see. Don't need that. Don't need this. If you're cutting stuff out, just solo it and play it. Cut and delete, cut and delete, blah, blah, blah. If I'm not sure, I'll solo it, listen to it. Obviously, something's happened here where the audio's completely gone. Um, but, you know, this is how I work through a song, just sort of strip silence is another way of doing it, just getting your raw fundamental files. But this is not the crucial thing. You need to fade this bitch. Otherwise, you'll get pops and clicks and whatnot. And it can give you like a real sense of, you know, you can do whatever you want. Oh, boom. Oh, that looks so nice. Cool. Maybe I need to pull this there. Blah, blah, blah. So if I decrease my view here and go down here, Suddenly my song is looking a little bit different. I don't have a complete audio file. I can actually see when things are coming in, coming out. So I'm not tapping into, oh, where, where is this? Let me find it. If I hear something at bar 33, I go, oh, it's that Tom. Or oh, bar 41, oh, it's this Tom. Or, you know, vice versa, or going down the track. By reducing the audio file and what's playing, you're also reducing the disk usage. So you're getting more performance out of your system. Really good thing. Color code it the way you want. For me, you know, the rhythm is always a darker sort of tone, sort of like, you know, the roots of it all going into vocals, which is pink. I don't know why I picked that. Maybe because it's up there and like floating around um, in terms of my comparison. I'm not trying to get into any weird shit with any talks about, oh, why the fuck did you say that? That's weird. But anyway, all my songs will represent these colors sort of schemes. So any song I open up, I will just go to it and I know what's going on. Another thing is your tempo. Make sure your tempo is cool. If you don't know how to find your tempo, you can actually go through, uh, in Logic, you can go to metering, BPM counter, you can also tap tempo in order to figure out what you need to do. However you go about it, just get the tempo right of the song. The thing is, if you don't get it right, once you start doing your editing or moving things around, not to a grid, or adding delays and reverbs that are not strict to the tempo, suddenly you start finding yourself a little bit confused in the way the delays fall in with each other. Suddenly they're not going in rhythm, they're all like, ah, oh, wah, boom. Sounds messy, sounds terrible. If you can get the tempo right, just either from the producer or from the artist or tap tempo or go uh, BPM meter, find that out.
that would be a really good thing. Next thing is to go to your preferences, audio. This is where your beast will work most efficiently or shit. When you're recording, the lower the buffer size, the better it is. So the lower the buffer size, when you are recording, the better it is. The reason for this is when the audio comes through your system, gets processed through your DAW and back out, sometimes you hear an artist going, I can hear an echo when I'm recording a vocal. I can hear a delay. It's because of the processing time that happens. So you want less processing time. So if your computer can handle it, go 128, 64, you know, whatever, whatever it can be. So that will reduce the latency of how an artist will hear the song after the song comes in to the DAW, out of the DAW, back to what they're hearing and singing. But my visual cues are really nice and working, but if not, you sort of get that process, right? So if you don't want anyone to hear a delay when they're recording, drop the buffer size. If your computer can handle it, then awesome. If not, you might need to do a few tricks, which I can cover later if you need. Just hit me up. Um, when you start mixing, you can go higher. Only when you're mixing. Because you can use more processing power of your computer to process all these cool delays and reverbs and all this automation and all that stuff, you're suddenly getting into a point where you're getting more fine tuned and into a song rather than just adding bits and pieces. So that's the idea. When you record, go lower. If your computer can handle it, otherwise you need to do some other shit, uh, which I can cover later. When you mix, don't have to necessarily go high, but just go around the 256, 512. Buffer size. This is what we're going for. Make sure you apply changes. Very simple, but a very, oh, like a thing that people overlook. Also, if you've got other programs going and your computer's like chewing up a lot of memory, uh, and crashing all the time, not doing this thing. Go, do I have other stuff open? Do I have Facebook open? Do it. If you're mixing, get Facebook off, put on your phone, do whatever. Get your system clean. Turn your Wi Fi off. You know, if you don't need it, turn it off. Turn all the other programs off and just focus all your energy and your computer's energy to what you're doing. You'll get a lot more better system system um, performance and response. So there's a couple of things I covered. So in terms of organizing your session, moving stuff where you need and how you feel best. Don't have to follow this, but it's an idea. Color code it. Get rid of stuff you don't need in terms of the audio files compared to that. Make sure your tempo is good to help with your editing, help with your delays and your reverbs and everything else. How to improve your system performance from recording to mixing. Uh, there's some useful tips to get you started. Hope that makes sense. If not, hit me up. My name is G. Um, I'm going to just sitting in the backyard after a session again, helping you out. But what I'm doing is just sitting on a laptop and fucking helping you out. Uh, in front of a studio with all this cool shit, whatever not, it is what it is. And I'm just being real with you boys and girls, uh, just to see what you want to do. I'm here to help, here to make it work. So any questions, please hit me up.